In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the theoretical yield and the percent yield. So in this problem, we have 30 grams of propane, C3H8. It's reacting with air to produce 70 grams of CO2. So what's the first thing that we need to do? The first thing is we need to write a chemical reaction. So propane reacts with the oxygen that is in the air, so that's O2, and it's going to produce water and carbon dioxide. So this is known as a combustion reaction. The products of a combustion reaction is always water and CO2. And these types of reactions are highly exothermic. That means that they release a lot of thermal energy into the environment. Now, before we can calculate the theoretical and the percent yield, we need to balance the combustion reaction. How can we do that? Feel free to pause the video if you wish to balance this reaction. And once you're finished, hit the play button to see if you have the right answer. Now here's the process that I recommend using when balancing combustion reactions. First, balance the carbon atoms. Second, balance the hydrogen atoms. And then save the oxygen atoms for last. The reason why you want to save the oxygen atoms for last is because you have a pure element here, O2. You could change this number without changing any other elements. For instance, if you change the coefficient in front of propane, you're changing the value of two elements, carbon and hydrogen. Whereas if you put a number in front of O2, you're only changing the number of oxygen atoms on the left side. So that's why you want to save this for last, is because it's the pure element in this chemical reaction. So let's begin by balancing the carbon atoms first. We have three carbon atoms on the left side. We only have one on the right side. So to make them equal, we need to put a three in front of CO2. Next, let's move on to the hydrogen atoms. We have eight hydrogen atoms on the left side, only two on the right. Now, if we take eight and divide it by two, we're gonna get four, which means that we need to put a four in front of H2O. So we get a total of eight hydrogen atoms on both sides of the equation. Now, the last thing that we need to balance is the number of oxygen atoms on both sides. So in the four water molecules, we have four oxygen atoms. There's an invisible one here. So you multiply the coefficient by the subscript and it gives you four. In the three CO2 molecules, we have a total of six oxygen atoms because if you multiply three by two, you get six. So thus we have a total of 10 oxygen atoms. So we need 10 on the left side. 10 divided by two is five. So we need to put a five in front of O2. This will give us 10 oxygen atoms on both sides. So now we have a balanced combustion reaction. So now we can move on to the next step, and that is calculating the percent yield. So let's talk about the formula for the percent yield. The percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. So that's the formula that we're going to use. Now, the yield typically corresponds to the product of the chemical reaction. And we have two products, water and CO2. But in this example, we're focused on CO2. Now, what is the difference between the actual yield and the theoretical yield? The actual yield is the amount of product that we actually got in the experiment. The theoretical yield is the maximum that we could get if the experiment was 100% perfect. So keep that in mind. The actual yield is how much we get by experiment. The theoretical yield is the maximum that we can potentially get. Now, it's important to understand this because the actual yield is not something that you can calculate without knowing the percent yield. In this problem, we need to be 
we need to measure the actual yield. And so it has to be given to us in this problem. And it is. In this, in this reaction, we measure 70 grams of CO2 being produced. So that is the actual yield. It's the amount of product that's actually produced in this reaction. It could be in grams or it could be in moles. What we need to do is calculate the theoretical yield, the maximum amount of CO2 that we can get in this experiment. Once we have that, then we can calculate the percent yield. In order to calculate the theoretical yield, we need to convert the grams of reactant to the grams of product, in this case, the grams of CO2. Now, when working with these types of stoichiometric problems, you need to identify the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. The limiting reactant is propane. The excess reactant is O2. Notice that we weren't given the grams of O2 that reacts with propane. It simply burns in air. And so we're assuming that there is a relatively unlimited supply of O2 in the atmosphere. So O2 is going to be the excess reactant because we have so much of it in the air. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start with the information we're given. 30 grams of the reactant propane. What we're going to do next is convert this to moles. In order to convert grams to moles, you need to use the molar mass. So we need to consult the periodic table. Propane consists of three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. The atomic weight of carbon is 12.01 and for hydrogen it's 1.008. So let's uh, go ahead and plug these numbers in. And so the molar mass of C3H8 is 44.094 grams per mole. So this means that 44.094 grams of propane is equivalent to one mole of propane. So one mole has a mass of that many grams. Now we need to set it up in such a way that the unit grams of propane cancels. Now let's get rid of this. Let's move on to our next step. In our next step, we need to change the substance from propane to carbon dioxide. In order to go from one substance to another, you need to use the molar ratio. So what this means is that one mole of propane will generate three moles of CO2. So if we consume one mole of propane in this reaction, three moles of CO2 will be produced. And that is the molar ratio between those two substances. Now we're going to put one mole of propane on the bottom so that these units will cancel. And we're going to put three moles of CO2 because ultimately we want to get grams of CO2. Now, in order to convert from moles of CO2 to grams, we need to get the molar mass. And so we have one carbon atom plus two oxygen atoms. We know that the atomic weight of carbon is 12.01. The atomic weight of oxygen is 16. So it's 12.01 plus 32, which gives us a molar mass of 44.01 grams per mole. So this means that one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44.01 grams. And now we can cross out the unit moles of CO2. So let's do the math. We're going to multiply by the numbers on top and divide by the numbers on the bottom. So it's going to be 30 divided by 44.094 times 3 times 44.01. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Let's get that answer. So you should get 89.83 grams of carbon dioxide. This right here is the theoretical yield 
of CO2. So this is the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced in this chemical reaction. If we only have 30 grams of propane, this is the greatest amount of CO2 that can be produced by burning 30 grams of propane. So now that we have the theoretical yield, let's go ahead and calculate the percent yield. As was mentioned before, the percent yield is going to be the actual yield of the product divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. So if we take 70 divided by 89.83, it will give us a percent yield of 77.9%. So this is the answer to the problem. And that's how we can calculate the percent yield of CO2 in this example.